made it home, I dug her out, then I made her one of my aces. Marijuana fragrance, this tree here is outrageous. Want me to play in your city, send an email to my agent. Yo, what's going down, everybody? It is Straight Outta Boston here, aka the King of Boston. And today we are back for episode 7 of the Georgia State Dynasty on NCAA Football 13, 14, excuse me. And you can see here. Scott Powers, Gavin Edwards, Corey Potter, and Brad Barnes are ready to visit. Kyle Flowers, Ross Jackson have have uh, committed. Isaac Smith, we are in a battle with Wake Forest. And Will Burks has committed to Florida Atlantic. You can see here we're going to upgrade the closer once again for head coach Ian Vogt. And we're going to end up, I think we had a couple upgrades for defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator, but I didn't end up showing those because it's not big deals. So we're scheduling visits right here. This is a, once again, sped up version. And here this week we did an overhaul on our recruiting. I probably took about 12 guys off the board. As you can see right here and i ended up adding a bunch of guys who although it's week six their lock percentage was low so that uh i still had a good chance of possibly getting them so anyway i just moved guys that were really out of the race on that we really had no chance of getting even if i put max points into them for the rest of the year but i do think we have a solid recruiting class coming in i like a couple of our guys i really think we're gonna have a good group of running backs come in if everything goes to plan i know there's like two running backs that i'm really going after and then two running backs that i'm kind of not really going after but i'm still in the lead on them so anyway that's pretty much the recruiting update i still have probably like another couple minutes of recruiting footage because i do have to add all these new guys and you can see actually i guess i already did add all these new guys this is me just putting points into some of the new ones i think joshua wright might have been new uh philip latimer Murr, i know is new he's a low overall but you know, it doesn't hurt to have depth. You know, you always got to have guys like that. And we are Georgia State. Hopefully, we can uh, improve our recruiting in the coming years. But here, we're going up against Alabama in this episode. Now, they are 1-2, and two, I believe, coming into this game. We are 3-1. and one. So, we do kind of... Or maybe they're 2-2. Two and two. I think they might be 2-2 two and two at this point. But they lost to Texas A&M and Virginia Tech. So, you know, it's going to be a tough test either way. Even though they've struggled a little bit this year, they've definitely underachieved. But... You know, it is Alabama, and we are Georgia State, so this is really not a game that I expect to win. We're in Alabama, in Tuscaloosa, Bryant-Denny Stadium, one of the hardest places to play in college football, and this is a team that has high aspirations for this year in real life, returning starters like A.J. McCarron and Amari Cooper. I personally like Amari Cooper a lot, actually. T.J. Yeldon is back. He should be a big impact running back for this team. So, anyway, getting into this gameplay right here, Alabama will kick off. Albert Wilson is back, and he's just going to need this one down. No sense in returning that one so far into the end zone. So, now we would take over Ronnie Bell, the man who has established himself in recent weeks as the defined and definite starter of this Georgia State team. He's going to come out running the triple option right here, or the uh, read option, I should say. And Bell up the middle gets a nice pickup right there, 15 yards on the play. That's going to be a first down. For the Georgia State Panthers now on third and eight. Bell out of the shotgun. He will drop back. Fire it left. And it's intercepted. The first interception of the day. The first turnover of the day for either side. And Alabama is going to get a little bit of momentum right here. Get the ball back with five minutes left to play. So McCarron hands off to TJ Yeldon. Yeldon is going to break a tackle and pick up a huge gain down the right sideline. He is going to end up being brought down just inside the 20. A 38-yard pickup for the running back out of Alabama. Here comes McCarron, drops back. He's looking to the left. He finds Kevin Norwood. Norwood's going to be brought down before he could get the first down. So it's going to be a fourth and one, and Alabama's going to go for it. Man in motion. I read it well, and I bring down TJ Yeldon with a minus five gain on the play, and we get the ball back. So here comes the read option once again. This is going to be a triple option, it looks like. And here comes Bell. He's going to keep it. Now he's going to pitch it to Albert Wilson down the right sideline for a first down and just a little bit more. 16-yard pickup on the gain. Here comes another read option this time. Bell is going to fake the handoff to Evans. He's going to outrun that man. And Bell first down on the play. The offense is looking good right now against this Alabama team. Here comes Bell once again. One of the little fake screenplay. Doesn't really have anything. Goes downfield. This was such a stupid decision by me as Sinceri picks it off. And I really should have just thrown that one away. I didn't have anyone. The fake screen did not work. And Sinceri is going to end up returning that one inside the 40. That is the second interception of the game for Ronnie Bell. Now here comes Jones in motion. This is the same play they ran to uh, actually end up getting stopped on fourth down earlier. But Yeldon shrugs off a couple tacklers and picks up a huge gain right there. 20 yards on the play and Alabama is driving. 150 to play in the first quarter. Handoff to Yeldon once again. This time he cuts back to his left and gets an impressive five-yard pickup right there. It was a good uh, use of just his lateral quickness and all that. So McCarron out of the shotgun. He's looking to his left side. He finds Kevin Orwood in the back of the end zone for a 12-yard touchdown right there. And Alabama gets on the board first. It will be 7-0. Bama takes the lead. And l hopefully we can just, you know, stay within distance of them, I guess. I mean, I don't know. This should be a blowout on paper, and it probably will be. 
This is a 99 overall team going up against a 60 overall team. And that is going to be 4th and 12 right there after we could not convert. So 3rd and 9, Alabama comes back. 520 left in the second quarter at this point. McCarron, he will end up firing to the right side. Downfield, Norwood is wide open. He gets 33 yards on the play. McCarron has been perfect on the day so far. 7 of 7, now 1st and 10. McCarron's going to find his man deep. It's Norwood once again. And Norwood is going to continue his big day. That's his second touchdown of the game. 44 yards on the play. 14-0 Alabama on top. Can Georgia State put some points on the board before the second quarter is over? Nope, we're going to throw another interception. Hubbard with the pick this time. One of the linebackers for this team. Or one of the guys in the front seven at least. So that's the third turnover of the game. The third interception. Now second and five. McCarron drops back. Fires over the middle to Amari Cooper. Cooper picks up the first down. 22 yards on the play. Now first and ten for McCarron in the Crimson Tide. Fires it deep. Norwood down the field. A huge pickup inside the five yard line. First and goal now. For the Crimson Tide. And that will be a touchdown right there to Brian Vogler. I believe one of the tight ends. That is going to be the third passing touchdown of the day for McCarron. 10 of 10 on the day. 21 nothing here. Can Georgia State finally get something going? It's going to be... Oh, that was so close. Drew Pearson drops it. And Sinceri picks it up before it touches the ground. The fourth interception of the first half. That is what really killed us today. I feel like our offense could have done a little bit better. We could have put some points on the board if we had not thrown so many interceptions. McCarron's going to get sacked right there. That's going to set up second and 17. We're just going to try and prevent that from scoring once again before this half is over. AJ McCarron drops back here. Second and 17. McCarron looks to the left side. He finds Amari Cooper for a 13-yard pickup. That's going to set up a third and five with 13 seconds to play. McCarron shotgun set once again. Drops back. He's looking, looking, looking. Tons of time. Fires it to Amari Cooper. First down. Eight seconds to play. And now they are in field goal range with two seconds to play on second and nine. This kick is up, and it is good. So Alabama will take a 24 to nothing lead into the half. They're absolutely dominating this just overmatched Georgia State team. Really nothing we can do at this point aside from at least try to cut down on their turnovers. But we were feeling the rush. Bell was just, you know, under pressure all day. It was not comfortable in the pocket and just... He struggled a lot, and we should probably should have ran more read option, but it's hard to run read option when you're down by three scores, and you're trying to, you know, at least be competitive in the game, but it is what it is. You can see the halftime report right here. As always, we're going to cut it to what the stat lines look like as the first half is winding, or is over, I should say. We actually are outrushing them, but they are clearly outpassing us, and those four turnovers to none are really what the difference is in this game. But anyway, we're going to kick this one off to them to start the second half. Jones back to return. He's going to cut to the left. He's got a lot of daylight. He cuts right then, cuts back. He's got space, and he's going to be brought down on the other side of the field. Cyrus Jones with a 53-yard pickup now inside of Georgia State territory. McCarron drops back first and 10. He's looking, fires, and it's intercepted by Bautista. But he fumbles. That is going to end up being picked up by Shepard. What a play. Bautista just intercepts it. It looks like I was spamming L1 or something because it kind of looks like I pitched it right there. Whatever the pitch button is. I forget what it is, but I, I must have been hitting that by accident and I end up pitching it and oh, we give it right back to them. What a bad play by the Georgia State Panthers. Now McCarron scrambles. He's going to be brought down right there. That's going to set up fourth and four. Now on fourth and four, the field goal unit is out. Backup quarterback, I think that was Phillip Sims who was on Alabama then transferred to Virginia and now is transferred to... Uh, I don't know. I think he transferred to like some D2 school at this point. I like Phillips Sims though. Ronnie Bell is going to be sacked right there for a loss of 14 yards. That's going to set up second and 24. Now on third and 24, can Bell convert? Probably not. He fires the deep. That is going to end up being off the hands of Jordan Giles, who really had a bad game today. Bell is 6 of 17. He's had an even worse game. Alabama gets the ball back in the 34-yard line. TJ Yeldon up the middle picks up a nice gain right there. Seven yards on the play. Alabama once again driving now here on third and eight. McCarron drops back into the shotgun. He's looking for Yeldon on the screen play. Yeldon, he's got some space. He's going to be brought down. Nice play by Matthews right there to break off the tackle. And that's going to set up fourth and three. Here comes Alabama for their third straight field goal. This one is up, and it is good. So a 30 to nothing lead right now for Alabama. So here comes the ensuing kickoff. The kicker will kick it away to Albert Wilson on the left side of the field. He will return this one. He's going to go to the left side, down the sideline, and he's got some room. He gets a block. Albert Wilson across the 50 to the 40. He's got no one to beat inside the 10-5 touchdown. And Georgia State finally put some points on the board. We get on the board right here with a kickoff return for a touchdown. Now 30-7 to is your score, third and four. That is going to be a handoff to Yeldon, who is going to pick up the first down right there. Across midfield, 11-yard run. For the Alabama running back, here comes A.J. McCarron now out of the shotgun set. He fires to the left. That is going to be completed to Kenny Bell for a first down. 13 yards on the play now. First and 10 for Alabama. 
Here comes a handoff once again to TJ Yeldon. Cuts to the outside. He's got a block. He's got no one to beat, and he's going to get into the end zone for a touchdown. 37-7 is your score, and Alabama retakes their 30-point lead. But here comes Georgia State. Once again, can they get an offensive touchdown for the first time all game? Denny Williams on the 11-yard pickup right there. That is going to be a first and 10 for Georgia State. Now second and five. This looks like another run play, this time to Travis Evans. Evans is going to pick up the first down, a little bit more, seven yards on the play. Now a new set of downs for Georgia State. Just trying to put some points on the board, avoid complete humility. Here comes Bell trying to run a, a slam play right here. Finally find Jason Hill, I believe that is. Kelton Hill, excuse me. I don't know why I always call him Jason Hill, but... Second and nine right here. Here comes Bell out of the shotgun once again. Scrambling to his right. He fires on the run to Albert Wilson, who will pick up the first down. Now we are inside the 35-yard line. Georgia State on the drive. Here comes Bell out of the shotgun once again. Looking, looking. Fires to the right side to Ruiz, one of our tight ends. Ruiz picks up five yards. He has not had a reception all year up to that point. Now fourth and eight right here. We're going for it. We are not in field goal range. And Keldon Hill picks up the first down. So first and 10 for us now with 2.20 to play in the fourth quarter. If you guys don't remember, our kicker is very, very bad. And uh, you cannot really kick anything outside of 40 yards. We were not in field goal range at that point. That is why we went for it. That's a seven-yard pickup for Gerald House now on third and goal. Here comes a little bit of a read option play right here. Ronnie Bell keeps it. He gets the touchdown. That's our first offensive touchdown of the game. Once again, now cutting the lead down. But an onside kick right here. Desperation measures. Really, we have no shot at this game, but it's worth a shot. It goes out of bounds, and that pretty much is going to wrap up this game. So Alabama is going to come away with the 37-14 victory. They end up taking care of business against us. I thought we played well, though. I thought that, uh, you know, we handled ourselves. We had some turnovers, but we cut those down. I think that would have been a slightly closer game, at least. And I thought we just handled ourselves well going up against probably the best team in the nation at this point, since they are a 99 overall. But either way, it's going to wrap up this video. So I thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. This was my Peace.